Hey, it's Tyler and welcome back to After The Run. Today I'm going to talk about why I loved The Biggest Loser and other weight loss reality TV shows when I was fat. And now that I've lost 100 pounds and have gone through the weight loss process, why I don't like these shows quite as much or at all. Um, I kind of hate them. So let's start with talking about The Biggest Loser. The Biggest Loser was and is, of all time, it's kind of the reality weight loss show. Uh, it had like 13 or 14 seasons on NBC. It started way back in 2004, I think, uh, and it's had like 250 episodes. And I've watched every single one of those episodes. I love this show. And in fact, um, I'm not much of a TV watcher. I've never had cable TV or anything. I just watch it on my laptop. And I watched every single episode of this show. And I was thinking about that this last week. Why did I love that show so much? Uh, because now that I've lost weight, I've thought a lot about all the things I hate about the show and why I wish they had done things different ways and things like that. And so I've been really reflecting on why did I love The Biggest Loser so much. And I came up with two big things. One is... Um, it gave me hope, <laughs> and that might sound crazy, but I saw these huge, morbidly obese people on this show, and this is going to sound really horrible. I know there are a lot of good people that were on the show. In fact, I've met a few of the contestants on the show, and I know they're great people, and they're doing great things with their life. But the way the show was edited, it made these sob stories, and it, it portrayed many of the characters as people who were uneducated, didn't have their lives together, didn't have any discipline, had major issues. And my thought as I watched this show over all the seasons was, if they can lose weight and they're like that, anyone can do it. It must be easy because these people who have nothing together in their lives seem to lose hundreds of pounds. And I, I throughout all this, I'm thinking to myself, I'm pretty a smart guy. I've got things together. I work hard and have discipline. If they can do it, certainly I can. And so more than anything else, watching The Biggest Loser gave me hope. And I want to say it, it motivated me, but the truth is it didn't. In fact, over the more than 10 years that it was on the, the air, I gained 100 pounds during that time. So while I'm watching this show, I'm eating ice cream and, and snacking on other things and enjoying it for entertainment's sake and for the reality TV aspect of it. But rather than helping me actually lose weight, as I was watching the show, I was putting on a lot of weight. And so it certainly didn't motivate me to action, even if it did give me hope and inspire me in certain ways. And certainly one thing I actually really like and still can appreciate about the show is it did get me talking to my wife and my children about health and weight loss. And it made that part of our conversation in our home or at least helped with that conversation in our home. So I'm really appreciative for that. And I think that show and other shows, I mean, there's another show that I actually like a lot more than The Biggest Loser called Extreme Weight Loss with uh, Chris, Oh, I can't remember his last name. He's awesome. Um, him and his wife, I think her name's Heidi, they do this show. And I think that one, as far as talking in the family and having uh, weight loss as part of our dialogue, that one was even more helpful. Anyhow, that was the first thing, is it gave me hope. The second thing is, honestly, it, it was a fantasy for me. I thought about these people as I was gaining weight and I thought, they've got it all. This show is fantastic because the people don't have to worry about their jobs. They don't have to worry about their family and other responsibilities that they have back at home. And then they have every possible resource at their disposal. Little things, for me, having like good running shoes and underwear and things to work out in was kind of a big deal. As I was gaining weight, I was like, oh, I wish I had some of that stuff. But not only did they have that, they had access to a gym specifically tailored for weight loss. They had their own personal trainer, and not just that, some of the best personal trainers in the world. They went to a resort vacation spa place for months. So in my mind, I'm thinking this is a fantasy world where they get to go on vacation, have everything perfectly tailored for weight loss, all their meals are prepared for them and the calories are counted. They have awesome bath scales. They get to meet with a specialist doctor and dietitian and chefs. 
that tailor things just for them so they exactly know what their weight or body composition is and everything else. So they're getting all this information about their own personal health, have all these resources at their disposal, and then on top of that, what do they do to pass the time? Well, they are on reality TV and have millions of people watching them, but part of what they're doing on reality TV are these amazing challenges that looked so fun, and that's part of the biggest reason we watched the show was they would do these physical challenges against the other contestants and the other teams where they would be going through obstacle courses and doing all these cool things bungee jumping and skydiving and crazy stuff. Actually, I don't know if they did any of that stuff, but I know they did cool challenges. And I thought, man, people would pay hundreds or thousands of dollars just to do those challenges, and they get to do it for free as part of this reality show. On top of all that, the winners got prizes. Um, the overall winner, I think, gets $250,000, and the at-home winner got $100,000. And so this fantasy world for me, in fact, I started thinking, oh, maybe I should be on the show. What could I do? And at the time, I was overweight and even obese, but I wasn't so dumb to think I could win the show in my current state. If I was, for example, 250 pounds and my healthy weight would be 190 pounds, it would be impossible for me to win the show because there's not enough percentage of body weight that I could lose in order to win the show. So I started fantasizing, and now I'm going from what I loved about the show to now some of the things that I don't like so much about the show. For me to be on the show, and I went through this process in my mind, I thought, well, all I have to do is gain another 50 to 100 pounds, and then I'd be a good candidate for the show. And I thought, I, I know I can put on pounds really fast. I could put on 30 or 40 pounds just to make the audition tape, and then if I get in, then I could put on another 30 to 50 pounds before I get to the show, and then during that first week when everyone has massive weight loss, I could lose 30 or 40 pounds in that first week because I'd be overinflated in my weight. These are real thoughts that went through my mind, is I could be a contestant on The Biggest Loser, and I could win it as long as I gain enough weight to get on the show. Now obviously, that is not only a horribly unhealthy thing to do, but to even have that thought process in my mind because of the show, that's now one of the reasons why I thought, oh man, that show was not very healthy for me. It wasn't motivating. If anything, it gave me these horrible fantasies about gaining weight instead of actually losing weight in an unrealistic way, in a way that's not sustainable. And that leads me into other things that I don't like about the show. Obviously, the show wants to promote healthy weight loss and long-term weight loss. But as we know, the show's been off the air for now for a few years. And most of the contestants gained most or all of their weight back. Some gained even more weight back. It's a very small minority that kept off most of the weight that they lost on the show. So why is that? Well... It makes sense now if we think about it logically. They were in this fantasy world that has no resemblance to the real world. They came back to their jobs. They came back to their families. They came back to not having a fancy gym membership and a personal trainer at their disposal, having someone prepare all the meals. And then they had all the temptations that back at home that they you know, didn't have on the ranch or you know, as they went away to the gym. So it makes sense that it would be difficult to sustain that lifestyle because they can't have that lifestyle anymore. It's not realistic to think that they went from one life where they lost weight to a completely different life where they would still lose weight or keep it off. That's unrealistic. Um, and so that's part of the reason I don't like the show is it didn't talk much about that transition. What are we going to do at home? Now it did talk about that and it did talk a little bit about meal preparation and things like that but not nearly enough to actually help people make changes in their lives. It was there for entertainment. It was there for the reality TV aspect of the show. So that's something I didn't like. The other big thing, now that I've actually lost a lot of weight, and I still have some weight to lose, but now that I've been on the journey myself and I've seen how hard it is, I realize my life is the opposite of what was on the show. Not only do I not have uh, responsibilities and have everything at my disposal, but the opposite is true. I mean, I work a full-time job where I'm working 50 to 60 hours a week. On top of that, I have part-time jobs that I'm working. On top of that, I have four kids and an amazing wife and a dog and a house to take care of. And I refinished my basement this year and I landscaped my backyard and I wrote and published two books. So 
rather than having all this time just for exercise and weight loss and awesome physical challenges, I am working really, really hard just to live life. And so weight loss has to come on top of that. One of the messages that they promoted throughout the show that I just absolutely hated was, you have to think about yourself first. So many of these contestants came on and they said, I need to do it for me. I need to lose the weight for me. And while I agree with the sentiment, just like on an airplane, how you put on your own uh, air mask first and then you can save your kids, I agree with that idea. I don't agree that weight loss has to be selfish and that it has to be separate and that you have to leave your kids at daycare so that you can find an hour or two or seven a day to go to the gym. I think that's ridiculous. Is it possible to exercise and still have a full life? Yes, I just lost 100 pounds while working an extremely busy schedule. How did I do it? I wake up at four o'clock. <laughs> and so I'm selfish, right? Because I wake up at four o'clock to exercise and to write my books and do those things and that's selfish. No, absolutely not. I spend time with my kids, quality time with my kids and with my family. I give enough of myself to my students and I work hard as a school teacher. You can do all that and still eat healthy foods, still do exercise. In fact, I exercise with my kids and you don't see any of that on The Biggest Loser. You don't see how to integrate a healthy lifestyle into a normal life and a busy life. And that's what I'm trying to do. And it works. It makes, it requires making changes in your life so that you can do those things, but it works. Another thing that I really disliked about The Biggest Loser, well now, at the time I didn't even think about it, but now I dislike about The Biggest Loser and other of those reality TV shows, is the emphasis was on the physical activity and the physical exercise. And that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And some people like to work out in the gym, but I just lost 100 pounds and I never went to the gym once. I hate the gym. I don't want to go to the gym. Now that doesn't mean that I don't lift weights and I don't do exercise. I still do those kinds of things, but I do the things that I want to do, which aren't in this cookie cutter version of what they put on the show, The Biggest Loser. And so, yes, I lift weights at home. I don't do a ton of that. I do a lot of cardio because I love to run, and so that's my exercise of choice, but I do other physical activities as well. Now, that all said, it's not the physical exercise that really bugs me. It's that the show dismissed how you actually lose weight, which is not mostly through physical exercise. It's through your diet. 80, 90, even 95% of weight loss comes through what you're eating not what kind of exercise you're doing. Now, can exercise help you lose weight? Absolutely. Will strength training help you lose weight? Absolutely. Does cardio help you lose weight? Absolutely. But 80% at least of what you're doing to lose weight is what you're consuming and putting into your body. They didn't talk very much on the show about that, about how to prepare good meals. Um, I'm not a calorie counter, and so I had to learn about you know, reasonable portion sizes, what kind of foods helped me not be over inflamed uh, and retain things in my body. Um, I now drink way more water than I drank before and they did talk about water on the show, um, but not enough. And they did talk about healthy eating on the show, but not enough. Um, and they show chefs come in to prepare meals and occasionally they would show people on the ranch preparing things but it was obviously staged and it wasn't realistic things that they'd be preparing at home. And I wish they'd spent a lot more time with that kind of stuff because that's how you lose weight. It's, it's through what you consume. For me, the big revelation, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you know this, it was understanding that there are healthy foods that the more you eat of them, the more they satiate your appetite and the, the more you start enjoying them. So I used to hate eating salads. But now eating a particular kind of salad regularly is something I really enjoy and it makes me full so I'm not hungry for other things. Um, the show didn't talk about, they talked about not eating sweets, but they didn't talk about how food is addictive and how there are certain trigger foods and they're different for certain people than they are for other people. And so for me, I know that eating breads and pastas are going to really um, set off triggers in me and make me hungry for other foods eating natural fruits, you know, apples and oranges, for me, don't work so well because they make me hungry. Uh, and then I binge on other foods. And so I didn't see a lot of this kind of conversation happening on The Biggest Loser. And I wish I had because that's what I've learned for myself that has helped the most with losing the weight and keeping the weight off is changing my diet, finding foods that I actually enjoy eating that I can eat regularly, but still have variety in my diet.
okay? And so that's some of the stuff that really bothered me uh, about The Biggest Loser and other reality weight loss shows. There are other things too, you know, the whole drama that would happen on the show, which was great for entertainment, um, but there were also things that were unrealistic. You know, we, you'd see the contestants come back after being home for a few months, and they'd obviously, you know, done crazy things like sweat all their water out, and I wish they had measured um, not just body weight and body fat percentages, but they showed a little bit of other stuff, like you're gonna die because you're diabetic or whatever, and now you're not diabetic, you win. You know, they would do stuff like that, but they wouldn't talk about what percentage of your body weight is water. And for me, that's been a huge thing. I've gone from 42% to 54% in the last year. So I actually have a lot more water weight than I had before, and if I had the same amount of water weight, I'd be 20 or 30 pounds less, which of course is what I would have to do to win The Biggest Loser, is be super dehydrated, um, and I could do that and probably in a week or two I could lose another 30 pounds. It would be totally unhealthy. It wouldn't help my long-term health and weight loss. Um, but that's what you do to win the show. And they didn't talk about that at all. I wish they would do like a special now where they talk about what we'd learned by filming The Biggest Loser and seeing the problems that came up. Obviously they know of some of these issues and they know some of the things that went wrong. Um, it would be great to see a follow-up. Now, I don't expect that to ever happen, um, but there are other people talking about these things, thankfully, um, and there's a lot of great experts out there. Um, like, oh, I remembered his name. Chris Powell was the one on the other show. Um, he talks about some of these things, and I think it's great because we need to understand um, weight loss better, ex especially extreme weight loss. Um, the other thing that the show didn't talk about very much was the difference between extreme weight loss and normal people weight loss. Most people aren't losing, looking to lose 300 pounds, they're looking to lose 30 pounds. And your approach for losing 30 pounds should be very different from your approach to lose 300 pounds. If you're losing 300 pounds, you can realistically lose 2% of your body weight every week. And so if you're looking at 300 pounds, you know, of weight loss, that means you're a 400 or 500 pounds. If you're 500 pounds, 2% of that, let's do our math really quick, 1% of our speed. Is that 10 pounds? You could realistically lose 10 pounds a week? I don't know, my math's bad. Don't tell my students. Um, but you could lose 10, 15 pounds a week and be living a healthy lifestyle. If you're 30 pounds overweight, you can lose one, maybe two pounds a week. Uh, over that, it's unhealthy. It means you're losing water weight or other things and losing muscle. And you don't want to be doing that. You want to be getting healthier, not less healthy. So those are some of the issues that I have with The Biggest Loser. Um, I loved it when it came out. It inspired me. It gave me hope. It showed me a fantasy world. Now I realize there's a lot of issues with the show, which is why I'm sitting here making YouTube videos to hopefully help someone else out there. Um, and, and pass that forward. I'm really grateful that I've been able to lose this weight and if you're new to the channel, um, this channel is just uncut, unedited versions of me talking about what I've lost, learned in my weight loss journey. I'm still going. Uh, this next summer I'm really excited to make my transformation video and I'll be launching a new channel with more produced videos, uh, more professional videos that show everything I've learned along the way. But in the meantime, I have this here for you. I hope it's of value to you. If it is, go ahead and give me a comment uh, in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you think about the channel uh, and you can subscribe and hit that notification button to make sure that you don't miss a new episode. All right, have a great week, bye.